You're listening to Barbell Logic, brought to you by Barbell Logic Online Coaching, where each week we take a systematic walk through strength training and the refining power of voluntary hardship. Welcome to the Barbell Logic Podcast. I'm Scott Hamrick. That over there is Matt Reynolds. And as always, we were saying interesting things before we turned the mic on. And That's we're right. going to let you in mid-conversation. And Matt we were said, having a conversation as we do because this is how Scott and I talk over Zoom. By the way, God, I'm getting tired of Zoom, aren't you? you getting, I'm ready to like sit down and have a cup of coffee with somebody else. Oh, sure. Like in sure. person. Oh, my God. It's yeah, crazy. We, we resumed our uh, – we have a um, we have a Monday card game. Every Monday we play cards with some friends. And uh, we, yeah. put, we, we, we kick that back off. By the way, what uh, I played cards with you once. What was the name of that game we played? Uh, we were playing. We were playing Wizard. No, Wizards. Uh, it, yeah. Is that what we were playing? Yeah, that's what I played with you. Yeah, and we played with and, Dallas and, and who Paula. Won? Do you remember? You won that time, so I can't wait the next time. <laughs> I had never played it. And I beat all you guys. Well, so, that, that but time. It, it was fun. It was a fun like strategy game. No, we. I was telling the story. Uh, my daughter, my fifteen-year-old daughter, is she's got mama's genetics. Right. She's beautiful. And she's 15. Of course, we homeschool. And um, but she she loves nerdy guys. I'm like, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> you know, and I and I see these guys that you know, like like prototypical bad boys like my daughter, and she's not interested. Not interested at all. She's 15, pushing 16. And she's my daughter looks like a professional CrossFitter. Like it's again, it's Rachel's genetics. This is the way Rachel looked like in high school. As a matter of fact, Kaylin is more jacked than Rachel was. She just jacked. I mean, she's done gymnastics and stuff. She never, I can't get her to lift. She'll screw around a little bit in the gym, but for the most part, she didn't care. But she loves these little, like, nerdy, redheaded, <laughs> literally redhead, freckly, just got a 33 on the ACT boys. That's what she likes, which is great because they don't, they don't have any clue. They're terrified of girls. They, they you know, they don't have any idea what to do here's the weird thing i've talked about even on this podcast my 15 year old daughter not a great work ethic i hate it i wish it wasn't the case we've modeled good work ethic mama works hard daddy works hard kaylin doesn't work hard here's the interesting thing that's happened over the last couple weeks during kind of the covid uh kaylin's interested in making some money but if i'm like hey i'll pay you x amount of money to go out and pick up the dog shit out of the yard she's like ah not really interested Sure. And I'm like, well, I don't want to walk through dog shit in the yard, so somebody needs to go pick it up. So little sister picks that one up. That's a job a nine-year-old can do. So we bought a composter a couple months ago, beginning of the season, and it was it was a pretty in-depth composter, you know, that you spin and stuff. And I was like, you know, I'll, I'll pay you to, to build this. I think I told this story. I was like, I'll pay you this much to build it, and if you have to get help from me, I'm going to reduce it by $10, and if I, you know, if I actually have to build some of it, I'm going to reduce the pay even more, but I'll pay you this much to put, I think, 50 bucks or something, put the thing together. And she put it together great. Mm-hmm. So last week we bought, we were, we've been struggling a little bit within the, the garage. Just our garage, we have to clean out our, I don't know if you're like, well, you you train in your garage. You got your gym in your garage. We got to clean out our garage about once every two weeks. Amazon boxes build up. You've got just, you know, just, I don't know, just shit builds up. And so we bought a, a nice garage cabinet system, cobalt from Lowe's. And I've got, already have like the big toolbox and stuff. I mean, the big full cabinet system. I was like, I'll pay you to put that together. Same deal. Mm -hmm. If you need help, it's going to reduce your pay. She went out there and worked like she was a sharecropper for two, for like two and a half hours, like not even that long. And she's like, done. I was like, done what? And I walked out and the whole system was put together and up against the wall. And I was like, hold on. Are, are you good at manual labor? And I didn't even know. And what it is, if she has a set of instructions, like you could never go, Kalen, I need you to mow the lawn or like weed eat or edge and like just generally do this. And she's not good enough to figure out initiative and like, oh, I'll, here's how to do it. But if you give her a step-by-step set of instructions, sure. she can do anything. Well, she needs the mowing instructions. Right. So I would need to give her a list to say, yeah. here's how to mow. Do this first, then do this, then yeah. do this. But anyway. Not no, she that. crushed it. She's been pretty good, and she's good. I mean, she, you know, she had to use the big DeWalt 18-volt drill and all that. I mean, she's fine. She did good with it. It's kind of interesting, you know. So here, she's upstairs right now working on a research paper, and I'm just like, 
I'm not literally beating her, but it's like I'm having to beat her to death sure. to like finish a research paper. And but she'll go out and build a set of garage cabinets and 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 the other thing about Kaylin is she is the girliest girl you'd ever meet. There's not an ounce of like tomboy tool thing in her. She just um, but she just it's so it's it's real weird. It just completely caught me by surprise when she was able to do it. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, it's almost like they have uh, proclivities and things, and that it doesn't matter really what you want them to do. Right. Hmm. Isn't that weird? Huh. <laughs> so we're doing Q and A, right? We got some Q and As. Yeah. On our last Q and A. If you go back to last week's on thir- Thursday, uh, we ended up talking about uh, performance enhancing drugs. Yes. The difference between those and a prescription from your doctor. Yeah. And that made me want to, that may, uh, I, I had some thoughts about that that I wasn't, uh, that I did not share on that show. All right. Now that you've all ruminated on this for seven days. Yeah. Because you were talking about people taking four, five, six grams of exogenous testosterone a week. And I'm like, Um, So Bruce Jenner famously ain't Bruce no more. Sure. Matt Kroc is Janae or Jana Kroc or whatever now. Janae. Yep. Yep. And there there are several examples of this. And I have often wondered if they had, if if these kinds of people, these kinds of athletes, had so disrupted... Their hormonal milieu, sure. That everything's a mess from then on. That's interesting. To, to, like, obviously, we'll tread lightly here, but here's what I know: I've met Matt Croc, or Janae. I apologize. I met Matt. Well, no, it's not true. I met Matt Croc when he was when sure. he was Matt when he was Matt Croc. Right. And uh, great guy, super nice. He's a he was maybe still is a pharmacist. I don't think he's ever hid this, was on a ton of drugs, performance right. enhancing drugs. As a matter of fact, the guy I was talking about last week that suggested that everyone at Strong Gym use six grams plus of the professional powerlifters trained was Matt Kroc's training partner for some time. Hmm. They were actually at the they they would compete for a couple years on who was the best 220 slash 242 powerlifter in the world. There you go. So I so I I don't have any idea what what Bruce Jenner's yeah, I mean, if, if he has any history of performance enhancing drugs, but oh, are you shitting me? If you won well, the Olympics no, no. in the seventies, come on, it's everything. Uh, of course, that's that's probably the case, but we need to say allegedly, just for sure, because sure. we don't yeah, actually right. know, right? Yeah, we don't but actually I, know. But I, I do know about about Croc. Was that is the case? And um, you know, it, it's listen, hormone people people think hormones are they black see magic, man. Frat, they see frat boys. They see Jersey Shore guys that like are jacked and pretty lean and like, man, I'm just going to take some testosterone. I'm like, listen, hormones aren't something to be screwed with. Mm-mm. It's listen, it's the same. And by the way, it's they'll make you wear females, a dress, right? Man. Like, we're seeing this. Like, how many females struggle with birth control, which is a combination of hormones, yep. right? Or um, you know, they're perimenopausal or premenopausal or postmenopausal, and they've got all this. Like, there's there's always trade offs. There's trade offs to taking ibuprofen. Yep. Right. There's trade offs to all that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, I think that sometimes people think like, ah, oh, it's fine. I'll just buy it out of the back of the trunk of the guy's car at Gold's Gym and everything will be fine. Like, listen, let's just drugs like that are like guns, right? They are to be respected. There is a correct way mm-hmm. to use firearms and there's a correct way to use testosterone under the watchful eye of a doctor. If you own firearms, you should be trained in how to use a firearm. Like you don't buy a firearm having no idea how to use the thing. That's it's dangerous, you know. Yeah. And hormones are the same thing, and so you've got to be very careful. That's why we suggest strongly people making sure that they they have the the watchful eye of their doctor. Now you're going to have to find a good doctor, but as time goes on, those doctors who are who were sixty and seventy and eighty years old and think that everything testosterone is bad are being replaced with the thirty and forty mm-hmm. year olds who understand that. Listen, we're just trying to replace. Hormone. That's it. Yeah, it, replace it. Yeah, it's all. It's it's easier now to find one that um, that understands that stuff than it was when I got when I first started needing it. Yeah, same uh, for me. And, was, and let me be clear: there are doctors out there that are that are they're drug pushers. They're charlatans. Oh yeah, they're the same people that will prescribe you know opioids to people who don't really need it. There are people who will give you a whole bunch. There are doctors out there who will give you a bunch of testosterone and a bunch of growth hormone and a bunch of drugs you don't need. And we're not talking about don't don't find that just so it's legal. And sure enough, I guess it's legal if they prescribe it to you. We're talking about find a doctor who tests, tests your testosterone. He tests it. 
tests it. He tests your testosterone. And then he brings it up to par with what you should have been, or just like you said last week at, you know, at 30 years old, somewhere in there. And just ride that out. It's awesome being 50 years old and having the testosterone of a 30-year-old. Right. It's dangerous to be 50 years old and have the testosterone that's 5X of a 17-year-old. That's right. not the same thing. Or being 17 and not even a fully formed adult of the species and taking Terrible uh, idea. Tri- triple what you need. Like it's, that's right. It, it, it may idea. confuse you about which bathroom to use at some point, <laughs> apparently. It might. That's my theory. It, it certainly could. Sure. Well, the the point is that hormones are powerful, yep. and you know, um, you know, get, getting at, even out of the male hormones versus female hormones, thyroid hormones are powerful and can yeah. do all sorts of stuff. Insulin is extreme. Insulin may be the most powerful in- hormone we have. Very, very dangerous drug, but a very powerful drug that can yep. be used right not for perfor- although it can be used for performance enhancing, but like primarily used for, you know, for people who have problems with their pancreas and whatnot, like we got to be careful with hormones. And I think that sometimes people are, uh, I actually think the female population is less careful about it than males because everybody, you know, that's just kind of the culture. Like, well, I'll just get on these hormones for birth control. Oh, I just want to, and, and a lot of, you know, women that are like, I don't use it for birth control. I just use it to regulate my period or my menstrual cycle or whatever. Like, okay. And that's actually fine. And I'm not judging it. As a matter of fact, people in my family have done that before. But there is always a trade-off. There's a trade-off with ibuprofen. There's a trade-off with a- aspirin. Oh, people are nuts. Like my 14-year-old's got a little acne trouble, so I'm going to just like arrest puberty and put her on these that, pills. That's right. It's going right. to be great. It's going to be great. Then that's she. Right. Then they're like. Then you go read, and you're like, mm, half of women don't have an orgasm until they're like 35. Hmm. Mm. Hmm. It's not all the guys' fault. Maybe it's because they've been on. Maybe it's because they never completed puberty yeah. property properly. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah, good times. Question and answers with Barbell Logic. <laughs> Christopher says, episode on body dysmorphia. He said, uh, in one of your question and answer shows, Scott was talking about his young client who whiffed french fries for dinner. <laughs> I remember that. I think I actually said sniffed. Whiffing is when you like swing at a ball and miss. And miss it. That's right. But he says, I really feel for this kid because his struggle with body dysmorphia is something that a lot of us struggle with. I think it's probably a big reason a lot of us fail to get really strong. If you think it would make a good show, I'm wondering if this is a topic you and Dr. Peter would be interested in covering. Uh, You know, I've talked to Peter about this several times. Uh, He's very, very interested in what he calls, I don't think this is actually his term, but I've only heard it from him because I don't, I'm not steeped in this. He calls it orthorexia. Yep. So we know what anorexia is. That's the absence of eating. And he, he... Orthorexia is this is this um, the way Peter describes it to me. It's a um, it's an obsession with orthodox eating, right? Eating right. Sure. So it can be it can be people that take veganism too far, it's keto obsessive. keto too far. That's right. Like they just have an idea of what is correct orthodox eating, and then they focus on that to the point, well, to their detriment, and. Uh, um, he's he's very interested in that. We've talked specifically about doing a show about that. We should, um, we and then good. and then male male body dysmorphia. You know, I get just fed up. You know, men don't matter. I don't know if you noticed that. I don't know if you noticed that. Well, they don't they don't ever talk about the thing that men struggle with, which is fucking everything. Well, it's it's hey, a, it's I, as I prevalent. So. Hey, I think it's midnight, two a.m. Hey, I think somebody broke into the house. Who gets up and goes and risks getting shot and killed? That's the guy. It's fine. Yeah, but it's fine. Nobody cares. It's fine. Uh, hey, uh, there's on a some leak. level. By the way, I think that that's I think that's part of our calling. Well, I, I do too, but nobody cares. No, no, no. You're you're, you're you, right. You know, the, oh, the, the point oh, these, is that these body mom... image issues don't don't necessarily affect a specific demographic or a specific sex more than the other. But, oh, well, they and, talk and in about our cult, in our culture these body image issues. We focus so much more on the female, and listen, they they've got massive struggles. Oh, but, they've got it. I'm not denying that. But the men I'm not even, struggle, where well, they just struggle in a different way. Yeah, right. They watch superhero movies. People right. buy their kid a GI Joe figure, and he in real life he would be six seven, weigh three fifteen with a twenty nine inch waist. Like, and yeah. and then and you know. Yeah, so yeah, the, the, people the really same the same it. problem that we have with Barbies with little girls, we have the same problem with with, with boys. Yeah, but nobody we play cares. with GI Joes that no, you know, like nobody's actually built that way. Man you know, up, they're, they're all built like Mr. Olympia contestants. Man up, Matt. 
Yes. Okay. So what's the question? So he's asking about eating disorder. He just wants to do a show on it. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think Peter would be great for that. Peter's actually, I was you were talking about uh, in the last episode about... Peter and I have know, been that, arguing that, about Elon Musk, by the way. <laughs> it's about the, uh, <laughs> about the infamous, like, 40-inch... If you're over 40 inches waist as a guy, you're going to die. And if right. you're under 40 inches, you're going to be fine. And we're like, obviously, there's not, you know... Uh, I've been... I coach Peter now. So Peter, I coach him uh, in online coaching. That is a huge man. Yeah, he's six. He's huge. Six. He's, I think he's six seven, six 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 seven. And but here's the interesting thing about Pewter. Pewter's built like a guy that's five ten. He's got the same proportions, right? Just he's just thirty percent bigger or forty percent bigger than everybody. So right. he's got like a. How often you see a guy that's like six foot six, six foot seven? It's got huge a huge squatting ass and hips, right? Pewter does, right? He's just built that way. So it'd be interesting to kind of get his feedback because he is he's built a little different. You know, you you see him on Instagram or TikTok or whatever, and like, you know, the guy's talking to the camera and his face, he looks totally normal. And you're like, no, you don't understand. TikTok. That guy is six and a half feet tall and he's got a massive frame on him. So yeah. it would be interesting to talk to Peter about his thoughts about orthorexia. And, he's 36 and, inches from shoulder to shoulder, I bet. Yeah, he's yeah, he's, he's, he's super a huge wide dude. He's a huge dude. Yeah, that would be a good show. Yeah, we've been arguing about Elon Musk. You you and Peter? Yeah. Well, it's going to be two against one against you because I love Teslas. So everybody's so, like, everybody's like, oh, did you hear him on Rogan? Oh, he's such a genius. Oh, I know. And I'm like, well, all the things he says are confusing, and, and it, maybe it's he's a genius, but another explanation is that he's like crazy, mentally handicapped. Well, you know, listen, but like at, not everybody, that's not fair. Many, many, many people who are uber creative and do something that's sort of an industry He's never disruptor. done anything but PayPal. He's never done anything. Bro, that's not your crazy. No, he's First never off, done he anything. Didn't even do PayPal. He invested in PayPal. I don't even think he had anything to do it. He's never done. Yeah, his mom had like an emerald he, mine. That guy, that guy shoots rockets off all day and they no, land he doesn't standing do shit, straight Matt. up. He's an autistic figurehead oh, he literally for a CIA do front. He's never done anything. Oh, I like the guy. Elon, if you listen to this, I love you, sir. Hey, Elon, the fuck X, you. I want the I want I like that ludicrous mode. He's like, oh, we're gonna put a we're gonna put a wire in your brain, and then language will be language will be obsolete. I know. I saw you talking about the te telepathy. And then meanwhile, listen, the, meanwhile, the government. Listen, first of all, that's not even right because he denies the the any divinity or any soul in the human. In that whole sure. experiment, just denies anything unique or interesting about people. I, but if I, it is possible, he's just going to sell your thoughts to whoever buys them. Like, Google. the guy's fucking evil. <laughs> Luciferian. He, he doesn't even know he's evil. The opinions of Scott Hamburg are not necessarily the opinions of Barbara Logic or the CEO. But they are correct. Logic. Well, they might be, but uh, but I love those Teslas. And I get it. I certainly understand that Elon has got some crazy oh, ideas that's out there. that stupid tunnel project. He's like, oh, we got this boring company, and we're going to bore this... Uh, Bank Holes teller vacuum tube thing, but okay, but is that is that crazier or less crazy than people who've been talking for seventy years about flying cars? Oh well, it's all it's all stupid. But everybody's enamored with him, and they're like, "Oh, listen, that's how he originally is." So th they've now pivoted off of this original idea, and they're just going to dig a tunnel and put a road in it, and then you'll get in a driverless car. Like, there's nothing innovative about it. I thought that was always the idea. What was the original idea? Oh, you were going to put people in this capsule and it was going to be like vacuum actuated, like the thing you put your money in at the bank teller and like suck you to Vegas or suck you right, back to right, LA right. or whatever. I don't know exactly what it was, but there's nothing innovative in it. It's just a, his whole company is just a scam to, it's a way to suck up traffic, government money. In Southern California is the big deal, but and, and then And then he'll have like some, uh, some foreign interest uh, program all that. And then we'll go to war with whoever that was. And they'll just shut it off because they have back doors and all the software and stuff. It's great. That's oh, crazy. Rock is his name. Oh, Dwayne. He says, he says Dwayne, I've followed you for a long time. I'm a huge fan. Love the way you dress. He says, um, love the way you dress. Oh, my God. Dwayne Johnson dresses like that. Listen, Listen, that guy knows how to wear a suit. Doesn't matter what he wears. If you got a, if, if, if nah, you got a frame like about, that, he's a big, under, you know, he's got, he can I'm wear a toga. About, he could he would look great in anything, but he dresses a little bit juvenile for me when he trains. I'm not into like big logo like Under Armour logos. He's a little old and a little rich to have shirts that say like you know giant Under Armour logo. Of course, he's sponsored. They're paying right. millions and millions. Of course, 
Actually, in fact, I'm going to take that back. Under Armour, if you would like to pay me millions and millions of dollars, I'll wear big Under Armour logos all day long. Rock says, <laughs> "Sorry." he says, my press is maxed out. Three by five at 135. He says, can I just push press? No, your press no. isn't maxed out. No. It's not. Well, yeah, 135 is not. That is a low. That's a press that we have a handful of women that out press. And, that, and I don't say that to make you feel bad. It's probably time for a programming change. It's, just it's a that fact. simple. It's time to change your programming a little bit. Yep. Yep. Minimum effective dose change, right? Switch from three sets of five to five sets of three. That's the first thing I do. See so if you can hit 137 and a half for five sets of three, you'll be fine. And then start the rotation of like the heavy days versus the volume days. Every other time you press, one day you'll go really heavy. The next day you'll go lots of volume, lots of tonnage. Yep. You'll be fine. Uh, he says, I hate the press, which starts with the swinging the hips forward. It, it feels bad in my lower back. You know, Carl Shoot yeah, was having some lower back that. tweaks, and we deter and he and his coach, I think it was Stanton at the time, decided that it was the press 2.0 thing that was yeah. hurting it. Don't do it. Just strict press, dude. I think most of my clients don't press 2.0 at this point. Yep. It's just do a normal press. Mm -hmm. Just press. Just just stand there and press. That like we don't actually need to contribute to the press with the lower body. Why? Not because we're trying to train the muscles of the upper body of the pressing muscles and if i take some of that off of the pressing muscles and i put it on the hips then i'm not really training what i'm trying to train i can train the hips with the squat and the deadlift yeah and you may throw your hips when it comes to a meet or a one rep max attempt or something like that but day in day out that's it's, right it's, it's a pretty completely tough. different issue i want to be clear like how to press the most weight certainly i think you should help contribute as much as you can with your lower body if you're if you're competing in USSF or, you know, some overhead press competition, like, yeah, man, do whatever is inside the rules to throw the bar as hard as you can. But if we're training for general strength, if we if we press 135 for three sets of five, I'm not going to say any names, but specifically the guy that just emailed, then we don't need to worry about using the hips. We just need to worry about getting stronger. The guy just needs to get generally stronger. And so if it, number one, if his consistency is great, and we're just going to assume it is, but it might not be, and if his form is great, which it probably isn't, but let's probably assume isn't. it is, right? The next thing that has to change is minor changes to the programming. Your press hasn't, you mm. haven't hit your genetic limit at the press as yeah. a guy who presses 135. That's impossible. Yeah. He says he's a uh, five foot 11, 185. That's a little light. A little and light. I would expect an LP to end about where you are right now on a guy your size and That's your right. age. So you've got a long, you've got a lot of running room left here. Uh, Matt, I didn't read all this chunk, but he talks about torn labrum and spinal injuries and T7, T8 has crushed cartilage and he's an extra kyphotic. Listen, yeah. we're, we're all a wreck, dude. By the time you're 41 and you've wrecked a motorcycle, been in a fist fight, fell out of a tree yeah. house and, and gotten a car wreck, you're a re everybody's a mess. Yeah. You're going to be able to get much, much stronger. Uh, as far as throwing those hips, I've got an in person. I've got a, I've got a female client. I can't get her to quit doing it and quit laying back. On right. every single set, even volume work. So she's yeah. just going to have so to sit on the bench. She's That's gonna just what I do. I've, I force them to sit. I'm like, all right, you're not going to do it. You're going to sit on a bench. You can't throw your hips if you're sitting on your butt. Yep. That's, I do this exact same thing. Rock, you can do it. And, and, uh, and you ought to. All these, all these also things. Also, sign up for Barbell Logic, man. I'd love, to, I'd love to coach Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Yeah, I'll fix, I'll fix you. Big fan. Big fan. I'll, I'll fix you, man. You can, you can request me. Let's see here. Matthew says he's struggling with the bench press in LP. He found us through uh, Garage Gym Reviews, which is nice. All right. Shout out to Coop. Yeah. Uh, he's six foot one, two thirty five, and uh, about the right size. Yeah, and his bench is at one hundred and fifty pounds. That is not at the right size. He says, "Is it time that I, sh that I should move to five sets of three? Oh God, dude. Uh, that's uh, that's pretty uh, light. Wrong. That's pretty something's light. wrong. Something's wrong. So this is not quite. This is a very similar question to the previous question. If you think about it, six foot one, two thirty five should not be pressing. Should not be bench pressing one fifty for three sets of five. That's too low, and that's pro almost. I mean, man, I would bet significant amounts of money. The problem is not the programming. The problem is the calories. The problem is the consistency. The problem is the form. The problem, like one of those primary issues. The problem is you're not resting enough. Between sets, the problem, like whatever that is, maybe the guy's putting on, you know, how many times have you had a client at Barbell Logic that signs up and they don't realize that they're supposed to warm up and they're just like, oh yeah, I just did my first set at 150. Right. Well, wait, what? You didn't do your first set with the empty bar? No, no, no. I just, I just felt I was warmed up from the squat. So I just went ahead. My work sets was 150 for three sets of five. So I just put one. 
I've had I've had that conversation like ten times, and I'm like, uh, you most know. of my guys will bench press ahead of their squat for a while in LP. Yeah, and he's on day twelve of LP, and I would normally expect a guy to be benching about what he's squatting at that point, and then it yeah. stretches out and gets weird. It could be all those things that Matt talked about. Older guys, I'm, I'm thinking testosterone. If it's if it I be. if I prove to myself it's none of the things that you just mentioned, Matt, and nothing else is working, testosterone can really yeah, we say really that. sap it's the those things. Question. Hey, here's what you should do. Like one, get some help. Just yeah, get either sign up for Barbell Logic and get some help, or email experience at barbell logic dot com and get some free help, which is also getting help. Uh, yep. The, the bench press is a much more technical lift than people think it is. It's not as technical sure. as the squat, but there's a lot more going on there. And I bet I bet 10 minutes in person, I could put 10 pounds on that 3 by 5 well, for you. It's the only lift of the four main lifts that we teach where the bar path is not truly vertical. Right. The bar path has some angle to it. And if you don't do it right, then you're you're leaving pounds on the on the platform. Oh, my gosh. Here's Chad again. We talked about Chad last hey, time. Hey, Chad. Uh, 63305 is PR squats 385. He's going onward and upward. He says that he is experiencing severe ankle pain, mostly in the left ankle, since his squat go over 345. It's to the point I could barely walk a few hours after doing my squats. I have high arches and bad foot supination. I used to squat barefoot, but purchased a pair of power lift fours. Um, he says, I'm wondering if they might be causing the pain, or could it be my form? Could it be that I'm not kicking my knees out wide enough? Or if my foot width isn't wide enough? Any suggestions? I will eventually hire a coach, but I'm going to wait until... I know that my schedule will be more open to coaching. Yeah, it could be any of those things. Could be. Any I also of those things. probably go get some orthotics. I could probably go see a good doc. Like if you're, f- no, dude, nobody's great. got higher arches than Charity. Yeah, mine are really high too. It's it's probably not your arches. Your stance is probably fucked up. Your knees position it yeah, in the, the holes form. probably not right. It's probably it's form. Uh, the ankle doesn't flex or rotate. Or it's not st- enough. Right? It doesn't do much at all. Yeah, it's really common in the strength world to say, oh, they don't have enough ankle mobility. So we got to work. That is actually my experience is I have never had a person who did not have the ankle mobility to squat. That's actually not true. I actually had one guy who had ha- who had broken his foot in a car accident and had and had literally plates put into his ankle. And yep. so his ankle didn't bend at all. It was stuck at 90 degrees no matter what. And just on one ankle. And so in the bottom his heel would come off the ground, off that foot that could not flex more than 90 degrees. That's all he could get. That's the only guy in 20 years of coaching that I've ever had who had ankle mobility problems in the bottom of a squat. Yeah, if so, you can sprint even badly, yeah, you, you've got enough. That's right. You, you're having more ankle flexion than you're going to have in the bottom of a correct squat. Yep. But if your knees are way far forward and your shins are too horizontal and then you know you too much flexion in your ankle and all that kind of stuff, like, certainly that could... So it's probably a form issue. Hey, so here's the same answer. Just email experience at barbellhighfilogic.com. Send them a video of your squat. Let's let's figure out what's going on. Yeah, and the Adidas Powerlift 4, it's a pretty good shoe, man. It'll give yeah, you good service. Yeah, yeah. I think that shoe's fine. It's probably just form. Clifford says, Clifford. stealing from Peter legs to pay Paul upper body. He says, I uh, hope you all are well. I'm a recreational lifter. I am an intermediate, and I train full body, mainly compound movements three days a week. So, you know, Matt, we've been doing this show for July will be the beginning of our fourth year. Yeah. Well, complete and, three years, yeah. And our audience has changed significantly. Sure. I, I've trained full body, mainly compound lifts. No, hold on. Hold on. That's, let's, there's two, this is the glass half full versus glass half empty. Our audience used to be people who were pre-educated in the right way to do things. So there's two ways to, to look at or, this. Or now not at audience, all. Or not at all. We ne- we didn't get these emails about uh, why use compound lifts six days a week. We yeah, never I got that. But, stuff. but I, I don't ever. I'm not ever worried about a guy that reaches in that's that's and I, and I don't mean this to to like put the person down, but who's ignorant about the right things, what right way to do things. Like they're, they're reaching out for help because they're ignorant. I get it. I get it. So that's fine. Okay. So I get it. So what is, so what is, I, I know where this is going. Full body lifts. My upper, my lower body's too strong. I want to get my upper body a little bit bigger. Should it, can, can I? Oh, well, er, everything's odd. It's, it's not the way I think. So I, I'm just going to read the whole thing. Okay. Let's my read. training for the last nine months or so has not been progressing. I've tried concurrent waves of linear periodization and a couple of other methods without much success. You need to write that in bold, circle it with a highlighter, laminate it, and read that every day. 
yeah, the out things loud. that you've done so have you not see worked. That, that is that's right. You you acknowledge it here in writing, and you need to really, I mean, own that. He says, reading and watching more of your content, I've realized I need more training volume. Maybe not. You don't fucking know that. Right. It, you, you might be right. But there's nothing but you don't that know. we said. But you don't know. That's the point. That's right. He says, I currently do about 10 hard sets per muscle group per week. Max squat, uh, 165 kilos. That's great. Deadlift, 190. That's heavy. That's good. Okay. Bench press, 120. Okay. Um, you're, you're talking about how many sets that you do in terms of a week. Your training cycle horizon is probably not a week no it's probably a You're, month at this point oh i bet it's not you think it's more i think i bet it's less he probably needs to do lp oh right 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 i'm sorry yeah no you're right you're right yep it's probably it's pro well there here's what we know there is a right way to train and there are certainly things that like there's there are actually multiple ways to skin the cat but the thing that we can't get away from there are some like orthodoxy close-handed issues one is, is that we start with LP no matter what until it stops working, and then we make a change. Yep. And it sounds to me like this guy has never done that. He no, started it, with concurrent... Concurrent side, waves of LP. You know, yeah, and, right, and, that's right. And that's West better. style, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that for an advanced lifter who's paid their dues. And that's better than coming to a gym with no training log and just doing something that day. Sure. Uh, but he says, I'm not able to train more frequently. My sessions are already quite taxing. So I do not want my sessions to become any longer. Here's my question. Can I reduce my direct leg training from 10 sets a week to twice per week, two sets at the end of my workout? I'm mostly happy with my legs, but I need more upper body. Do you think I can maintain my leg size? Do you think, Eddie? Listen, I have a friend named Carl who's not Carl Shoe. This is a guy from elementary school. Yep. That guy has enormous legs, always will. There's nothing he can do. He would have to bench press. He, does, he doesn't squat. Right. No, he he's just a no, dude. He, put it all. he just has huge legs. He has right. giant muscular legs. He right. always has. And um, his no upper body is f normal. But for it to be in proportion, he'd have to, be, he'd have to bench 600 for a double. I I'm sure. not kidding you. He's got just enormous legs and a butt. And he doesn't have a big belly. He's sure. just built that way. I have no idea what you're built like. You're worried about aesthetics. The That's truth the of main, it is. The main problem is that. Most of us look like shit. I, I ain't horrible, but not very many of us are nines and tens. M most of us uh, can't be physique models. Most of us can't even get 50,000 Instagram followers for what we look like in our clothes. And you need to stop worrying about that. You need to train to get as strong as you can. And then when that happens, you will look better than you do now. Yep. Now, There's I want to go back. nothing wrong with wanting to look better. No. But as the primary goal of training... That's your listen, man. You're listening to the wrong show. You're you're going to the wrong people. Like we train for performance, strength, and health first, always. And aesthetics, we know if you train and you it perform comes. better, you get stronger and you're healthier. You will look better. Period. Yep. That's it. Right. You will uh, look better. So if the goal is like, hey, I'm pretty happy with the way my legs look. When you say that, that is a term I have never said in my life. Hey, I'm pretty happy with how X looks. Because that's, well, I'm actually not happy with the way anything is <laughs> <laughs> Everything's undersized. No, I, I just, it's just, you've, you've missed the point. Like we have a value system here and we're not telling you that you have to have our value system, but if you're going to ask us the question, the question, the answer is going to be, that's how we train. I, I will speak for myself and not you. I share that value system, but it's not a negative judgment about people who are concerned about aesthetics. It is from my experience that chasing the strength gets you the aesthetics. Chasing the aesthetics often gets you neither. That's right. It is my dogma because it's rational and I've seen it work. I've seen young men who aren't strong chase aesthetics in the gym and look the same every time I saw them That's for right. years on end. The guy who tries to get strong looks better. And then if he wants to specialize after being a late intermediate on bodybuilding and aesthetics, he can look really good. That's right. And then one other point I picked up on here is that you're doing full body compound lifts three days a week. If you listen to our show, you will know that once somebody ends LP, we almost categorically, universally, every single time almost, put them on a four-day split. That's right. Two up or two lower. Two up or two lower. Each week, if you can't train more than four, three times a week, and it looks like you can't from what I'm reading here, then you can spread out that four-day split over nine days and still get three sessions in per calendar week. Your programming is probably not helping you. And if you want to look better, hire me. I'll make you look better. And I'll make you look better by making your numbers all go up. 
Well, and the first thing you're going to do is you're going to fix this form and you're going to, you're going to give him accountability for his consistency. And then, while obviously programming correctly. And, and the, the combination programming. of those three things are going to, that's what works. That's all yep. there is to it. That's what works. So, uh, you know, I, I used to think about a lot back when I used to train in the old, olden days of the 90s. Back at the university gym, you know, I trained at Missouri, what, Missouri State University's gym. And every guy in there that was in college was trying to get bigger and stronger. Ten and sets every of ten. year, every year, over and over, I see the same guys. They're still 155, 160. That's what they yep. were. And the few guys who were in the squat cage, which at the time, there was one of those tiered, you know, trying oh, yeah. sort of things that suck. But they were in there squatting their balls off, and they were deadlifting. Those guys were, they look like fullbacks and linebackers for the football team. And they probably because they were doing they probably trained stuff. in high school and got pretty decently strong before That's they even true. left high school, and then they're at Missouri State or whatever, and they're just building on this base they've already That's got. That's exactly right. And, and and now, by the way, when these guys do four sets of eight curls, it's eighty two pounds, it's ninety pounds, it's That's not right. the thirty five pounds. You know. That's right. Let's get strong. Gavin says something clever. He says, I have a quick, quick question. I hear you all, especially Matt, talk about your parents training with barbells. How do you convince them to begin training and going to the gym? Um, you my parents are in their late 50s, have been unhealthy and sedentary your whole life. They have started getting more and more bad reports from doctors and expressed the interest in getting healthier. Mom is especially concerned about doing anything too strenuous because she had polio as a child and some messed up musculature, tendons, and ligaments in her legs. I think a lot of our problems revolve around a general lack of strength, but have a hard time convincing her that. If, you ha if someone has changed your diaper, they will not listen to you. Yeah. If you get really strong... Um, this gentleman says he's 28 and you have a wife and then she trains with you and she gets strong and you demonstrate it, then an invitation to your mom to come over and drink coffee while you guys train in the morning because you're too busy to meet her another time. Yeah. Uh, and a few sessions of that might interest her. But again, if somebody has changed your diaper, they pretty much ain't going to listen to you. Well, you can't convince anybody to do anything. Especially and, some of this goddamn dang hard. It's just that much more difficult, right? Like, it is really hard to train your kids. And it's even harder to train your spouse. And it's basically impossible to train your parents. Yeah, and for some tough. parents, they understand the value of this thing. And you can, you know, you can kind of teach them what you need to teach them. And sometimes they will accept that. But it just, you can't control the soil that the seed falls on. If your parent, you know, that's the deal. Some of them, they're just, some of them just aren't going to listen. This and is, it sucks because you'll stress over it, and you shouldn't stress over it. It's not your responsibility no. to heal your parents. Like if you want to, if you want to talk to them about what you do, and you want to show them what you do, and then they jump on, great. But if they don't, that's not on you. Yeah, there, there that's is on this, them. There is a sort of American cult of management, like that everything can, what you measure gets better, and whatever you focus on gets better, and we can manage this and we can improve it, and that there's a kind of idea of positivism, and if you spend time on anything, it's going to get better. And it's just, it's just not true. Right. People can't, you can't manage people. Nope. You know, the human condition, we've got antibiotics and I'm thankful for that. Uh, but the human condition and the drives that motivate people and uh, the amount of joy in their lives or the amount of introspection in their lives and stuff is, as best I can tell, unchanged. Well, and entirely intrinsic. Yep. I mean, ex external, extrinsic motivation lasts very very short amounts of time outside of that like it's you can't convince anybody to do anything yeah, so quit quit don't worry about managing your mom I, I want good for her and i know you do too and that's very kind um but probably can't do much but you know you and your old lady get strong invite her over for a cup of coffee and tell her hey you know this is when we can hang out love to hang out with you and uh you know maybe she'll get in there yeah here's what we know like the you talk about the human condition pressuring people to do anything almost always results in the opposite of what you want it to be. And so that's why what you're saying works well. Like the, Hey mom, you want to come over for a cup of coffee? Isn't, Hey mom, you need to squat. Let me teach you how to squat. Those are two different things. Yeah. So mom comes over for a cup of coffee. You squat and you hang out, talk to mom between your sets. One of those days she might be like, you'd be like, Hey, you want me to show you how to do this? And she might be say, okay, but yeah, the more you pressure her to do it, it's every single person is wired. And some people are worse than others. But everybody is sort of wired towards, if you pressure me to do a thing, I want to do the opposite. So you can't pressure them. If she, come over, she, if she comes on over on Mondays and drinks a cup of coffee for six weeks, she has an, a hobby or a habit at that point of showing up on Monday. That's a yep. big chunk of it. And then if she ever does anything at all, 
you know, it's, it's a win, but you know, you're not responsible for her happiness. You're not responsible for her health. You're not responsible for her whatsoever. Um, good for you for trying, but, uh, don't worry about it, man. Just love her. And, uh, if one day you throw dirt on her and you think it was too early, it's okay. It wasn't your fault. No, I'm serious. No, you're right. You're exactly right. It's these just, people yeah, eat themselves to death, smoke themselves to death. I all know. these people we right. love and care about. about and, you know, what are you going to do? Well, and the problem is, I, I, you know, I thought about this a long time ago with my dad when he when he got Parkinson's and got bad and decided to stop training when he needed to, more than anything else to continue to train was right. when he got diagnosed with Parkinson's. And I thought, well, I can spend the rest of my dad's life being mad at him that he's not training and working right. harder, or I can just value the time that I get with him. And so he he knew what I believed about training and trying to, you know, be tough and voluntary hardship and all that sort of stuff to make you better. And he decided that's not what he wanted to do. And I can I could have been, you know, had animosity for my dad or I chose to spend the best time I could with my dad, you know, for the remainder of his life. And so and I'm thankful that I was able to do that. Try, you know, now dad has no, you know, he's basically a a vegetable at this point. I don't get to spend any of that time with him. So I'm thankful that I got to spend the good stuff with him and I wasn't pissed off at him. Because he wasn't squatting at that point. Right. So. I don't hear very many people talk about this. You know, we clearly think that that, that this stuff is good for us and leads to an improvement in your quality of life and maybe even longevity. But, you know, if you hate it, does it really improve your quality of life? Right. You know, like, I, I uh, you know, Charity, I, I haven't been training as much as her, but I'm still out there, let's say, five hours a week. That's 250 hours a, a, a year. You do that for twenty years. It's a significant amount. Of, it's a significant amount of time. That's right. And if you're, and if it makes you utterly miserable, you know, did it leave your life better? Did it increase your aggregate happiness? You know, maybe not. And um, I think that's important. To, that's important to remember because sometimes I'll talk about this as being medicine, but the truth of it is, if the medicine tastes bad, you you slug it down and you chase it with a bunch of water and the taste is gone pretty, pretty soon. But if you're in a four day split and it takes two and a half hours, every single session, it's 10 hours a week. And then you have to eat like a, you know, like a crazy specialist every minute that you're not in the gym. Um, and you don't enjoy that. Maybe it didn't make your life any better. That's right. Maybe it ain't for you. So I think it does make your life better, but only, only if you enjoy it. So if you get a Parkinson's diagnosis, you're like, golly, man, I've got 18 months left. How much of that 18 months do I want to spend in a squat rack if I hate it? Sure. I don't know. People have their own calculus, you know. People have their own math that they do to figure out if things are worth it and good for them or not. And, yep. Um, I don't presume, t- well, sometimes I do, but I try not to presume that I know. Sure. My dad hates it. Yeah. My, my dad worked his ass off his whole life, picking up heavy shit, carrying around, you know, manual labor. He hates it. That. He's like, I don't want to do that. I've yeah, he hates it. Yeah. yeah, I get it. I get it. That's good. Well, there's another uplifting episode <laughs> of the Parpel Logic podcast. Uh, you know, best of luck. I hope you all can uh, get all of your loved ones to, to do the right thing. But, you know, sometimes you can't. Yep. Phew. Has uh, consequences for parenting, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. You learn in a hurry. Well, send your questions to questions at barbell-logic.com. And if you need some help, like uh, most of the folks that send in questions, and a bunch of you that don't send questions, y'all need help too, you can email experience at barbell-logic.com. And I think it's uh, the Nikki Berman will come run into your aid, um, sign you up as a, as a uh, coaching light client. You'll get to see uh, the software we use. She'll do a v- video conference with you and uh, give you a little video review of your uh, of your uh, lifts and uh, set you up some programming and get you moving along your way. And if that ain't enough help, well, we can convert yeah, it you to nothing. A, yeah, that it costs, costs you nothing. nothing. It costs you nothing. Yeah. If and you then, want to keep experiencing that, then you can sign up and get it every day. That's the cool part. So that's why we do it. Well, thanks for listening so much, and we'll talk to you guys in a few days. 